Welcome to another installment of Point Blank series looking at GarageBand. In the previous video from a few months back, I looked at how to build a basic beat in GarageBand. I mentioned then that GarageBand is in fact a trimmed down version of Apple's professional audio production software called Logic. If you haven't seen my previous video yet, you might want to watch that first because this video is going to discuss a lot of the concepts I introduced back then in a bit more detail. In this video, I'm going to compare some of GarageBand's features with Logic to see how Apple have managed to pack a load of professional level functionality into a package that's remarkably easy to use and hopefully not too intimidating. We'll begin where we left off in the previous video with the track I built. Here it is. Okay, so the first thing to note is that you can actually open any GarageBand project up in Logic. Here's exactly the same track that I've simply double clicked to open up and I've selected Logic rather than GarageBand to open the track. If I scoot over to my other desktop on the right, you'll see here it is in Logic. It looks exactly the same. And does it sound the same? It sounds absolutely identical because it is identical it's using the same effects and the same instruments and this is extraordinarily useful for two reasons firstly you can compose the track in GarageBand and then pass it over to a professional producer like myself who can finish it off in Logic the second reason this is really useful is that you can start making tracks in GarageBand and then open them up in Logic yourself when you have a little bit more confidence and experience. In fact, we see a lot of students in our Logic courses wanting to learn how to take tracks they've already made in GarageBand to the next level. Okay, so let's explore some of the differences between the two programs. So if I scoot back to GarageBand, let's start in the top left hand corner with the library function. Now we used the library quite a lot in the previous video to change the sound of our instruments and browse GarageBand's range of sounds. This is what it looks like and this is where you go to browse the sounds. Moving on from the library, we have this quick help function, which if we switch on, it'll tell us what any functional button does if we hover above it. For example, here, what's this button? Oh, the play button. And how about this? The metronome keyboard shortcut K, pretty useful. Flipping over to Logic on the right hand side and these buttons are there too. There's the library and there's the quick help function. But in between those first two buttons is this little eye and this is Logic's inspector. So if I open this up, then we see uh, a couple of text boxes. This is the region parameter box and the track parameter box. And below that, we've also got the channel strip. And these are just a series of shortcuts and advanced controls for various track and region parameters, which give you a lot more control over some finer details than in GarageBand. Let's just close that for now. Now the fourth button in this initial group is Logic's toolbar and if I open it up then you just see a load of icons there on this hidden toolbar. These are some powerful advanced functions that we'll discuss in Point Blank's Logic courses but for now I'm just going to tuck them away like so. Okay, we're still in Logic and I'm going to carry on moving through these buttons on the top left. The next one we arrive at is the Smart Controls button. Now we used the Smart Controls area in the previous video to tweak the sound of whatever instrument we had selected. And we could also, uh, in addition to tweaking the bass or the treble in this electric piano sound, I could scoot over here and tweak whatever effect parameter I have installed on this sound to drastically, say for example, I could cut all the high end on this EQ unit. Again, we had a little go at this in the previous video. So if you wanna see that in action, just scoot over to the previous video in this series. Now, if I scoot over on the left, to the window in GarageBand, we see that we have exactly the same button and it looks exactly the same because it is the same. 
There's basically no difference between smart controls in GarageBand and Logic. And so that's one feature that is pretty much consistent between the two. Okay, the next button along and the fourth and final button in GarageBand is the editors button. Now, if I press that, then we see the piano roll editor. And those of you that watched the previous video will remember that we can change the pitch, the duration, or the timing of any MIDI note in GarageBand. In GarageBand, we also have this function here, the score editor, which actually does a surprisingly similar thing, but just using this music notation view, I prefer personally to program stuff using the piano roll editor. If we scoot back over to Logic and tap the same editors button hanging out on the top left, we see it looks fairly similar. Really, this is very, very similar to GarageBand's Piano Roll Editor. The only difference is that we have a few advanced functions. For example, if I select all of these notes, well, it sounds like this. I have this scale quantize option on the left here, and I could select, oh, I don't know, the uh, the, the major pentatonic of F sharp, what would that sound like? I mean, yeah, sure, that, that, that sounds kind of interesting. I'm not sure I want to straight jacket my notes to the F sharp major pentatonic right away. So I'm just gonna undo using the command Z undo keyboard shortcut. Okay, that's the way we had it before. That sounds a little better. So there's lots of different advanced functions in Logic. I mean, for example, one of my favorite is if I select all of these notes using Command A, if I go to Edit and Trim, then I can use this Force Legato function. And actually the keyboard shortcut for that is Shift Backslash. And we look at keyboard shortcuts uh, in quite a lot of detail in the longer production courses. And what that'll do is that will make sure that all my notes last exactly the same length right to the next note. Um, so we've got loads of advanced functions in Logic, but basically you can do most of the same sorts of things as in GarageBand's piano roll area. Just in Logic, you have a lot more advanced functionality. We also have this score view, and then we also, in addition to that, have two other views, the step editor, and Smart Tempo. Again, advanced features in Logic that we'll look at in one of our Logic courses, probably in the future. Okay, so still in Logic, and we have one more button nestled in between these two that we don't have in GarageBand, and it's a big one. It is, of course, Logic's Mixer. And you see it's got this little icon of a mini mixing console. Now, this emulates large format mixing consoles. For example, I've got a picture of Point Blank's Audient console. This is one of the mixing rooms that I teach Point Blank's mixing course in. And if I scoot over to our other mixing studio, well, let's zoom in a little bit on this. This is our famed solid state logic console. And you see there's all sorts of knobs and buttons that you can twiddle in the top there, and all sorts of faders here that you can pull up and pull down to, uh, well, firstly, look like you know what you're doing and also mix your track. Now, even though I teach my mixing courses in rooms like this and this, actually, when I'm in Logic, I tend to mix exclusively in the box, i.e. I just use Logic's mixer. So let's open that up just to see what that looks like. Let's create a little bit more space down there. So it looks a little something like this and just like the analog mixing consoles we just saw, we've got faders and we've got pan pots and we've got all sorts of knobs and functions that we could twiddle here. The channel EQ that we saw before, uh, I could go and twiddle this stereo delay just like so. So the mixer is really great for tweaking a mix, adding and copying effects, and generally controlling various parameters from other areas. But we don't actually need the mixer for most basic functions. I'll show you what I mean. If I take this volume fader on the first channel and wiggle it up and down, then not only am I moving the position on the mixer, but what you'll also notice is that on the track here, this volume position is also moving up and down. And if you just look to the right of that here to the pan pot, then if I twiddle that, it's exactly the same as twiddling it on the mixer. 
And so the reason I'm showing you this is to show you that we don't actually need a mixer to manipulate the basic mixing controls. You can do a mix in Logic by just moving these volume sliders and these pan pots up and down. And if we scoot back to GarageBand, then we see, well, let's just hide the piano roll editor. Then we see that we have these same volume controls and the same pan pots uh, that we can use to manipulate sound and get our mix sounding as it should be. B. And of course, if we wanted to tweak any of our effect parameters, all we would need to do is open up the smart controls down here, navigate to whatever effect it is we want to tweak and tweak it here. So it is possible to mix in GarageBand, not quite to as high a fidelity as in Logic, but certainly what I encourage a lot of my students to do is be mixing as they go in GarageBand. So constantly trying to select the right volume setting and the right effect parameter settings as they're creating sounds. So even though we don't have a designated mixing area in GarageBand, you can pretty much do all of the basic mixing functions as in Logic. Okay, let's load a new track in GarageBand. To do that, I navigate to this little plus button on the top left, and I'm gonna select a software instrument to create a new synthesizer track. Now that automatically opens the library and the smart controls function at the bottom. And what I want to open is some sort of synthesizer sound. If I go synthesizer, and then I can navigate to, oh, let's say rhythmic, uh, how about house chords? It's gonna create a sound that looks and sounds a little something like this. And you can see we have this nice little transform pattern. If I play a couple of notes on my controller keyboard, you see that we can drastically alter the way this synthesizer sounds by simply twiddling around on this transform pattern, quite like this version. Okay, remember what that looks and sounds like because we're going to scoot over to Logic and see what happens if we do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to create a new instrument and I'm going to open the library and we have a lot more sounds to choose from, but I'm going to go to Synthesizer. Where was it? Rhythmic. And oh, we have a load more sounds to choose from. House chords it was though, wasn't it? So that creates a track that looks and sounds a little something like this. And actually I'm just gonna scoot back to GarageBand to mute this sound so it doesn't duplicate in your ears. And you'll notice that basically the same parameters are available in Logic. So this is Alchemy, one of Logic's Rolls-Royce synthesizer instrument sounds and it's available to you in GarageBand just the same as in Logic. Now I'm going to close the library and close the smart controls area because I don't need to see that. One thing you can't do in GarageBand however is if I open up Logic's Inspector I can actually open up this synthesizer and tweak in a lot more detail. Not only can I circumnavigate this extensive selection menu to choose between the thousands and thousands, look 3,402 presets. But I can also go here to the advanced view and I can tweak till my heart is content. So you have so much more functionality in Logic. Now if that's daunting, then maybe you'll want to stick with GarageBand for now. If you find yourself wanting more and more control, then actually it might be time to make the step up to logic. Okay, that's probably enough of that for one day. Let's just delete that track and back as we were. One of the key features in Logic is the ability to edit and manipulate audio recordings in pretty much any way you want. To demonstrate this, I'm going to take an old remix of mine from my iTunes library and simply drag it into Logic and start manipulating it. So uh, I just drag it down onto a new track at the bottom of my arrangement and a new track is created. My remix sounds a little something like this. I didn't hear you. So I'm gonna double click 
this audio file to open it up in Logic's audio editor. Here I can do all sorts of advanced things like change the start point to make sure that the beginning of this audio file coincides with the very beginning of my track, like so drag it to the precision time I want this to start and I can also use my scissors to uh, chop the first two notes, delete the rest because I only want to manipulate these first two notes like so. And this is going to sound like this. Yeah, not bad, but what I want to show you is one of the advanced features of Logic, which is flex time. If I enable this button here, then I can turn on flex. And I'm just going to change this from slicing to polyphonic. What I can do now is treat this audio like a bit of elastic. It's flexible, so I can stretch it right out. See what that sounds like. Yeah, that sounds okay, but I want it to be bang in time, and I can even make sure that the exact beats are bang in time with, say, this one on beat three of bar one. Like so. And then maybe the second time, I might change the rhythm like so. I might just have that coming in half a beat uh, later, maybe something like this. You can see how this might be useful if you want to manipulate the timing of a track. And the good news is that if I flick over to GarageBand, then you can do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna drag the same remix in bar one and it looks pretty similar. I'm gonna double click on it just the same as I did in Logic. And if I go to the track button, then I can enable flex and all of the advanced flexible audio options in Logic are available to me in GarageBand and you can flex to your heart's content and create some pretty weird rhythms. I don't know what this is going to sound like. I mean that sounds complete garbage but you can see hopefully the creative possibility. So that's flex in Logic and flex in GarageBand. It's a slightly simplified version but it does essentially the same thing. Now, hopefully you can see a pattern emerging. GarageBand can do a lot of what Logic can do, but in a simpler, more streamlined interface. A lot of the more advanced functions are missing, but all of the raw power is still there, making GarageBand a pretty exciting prospect for the intermediate producer. Of course, I've not got time to showcase every single one of Logic's functions. We take a whole 10 weeks to do that in our Logic courses. But hopefully that gives you a flavour of just how much power GarageBand has borrowed from Logic, albeit in a streamlined, simplified interface. Hope that was helpful and I look forward to seeing you for the next chapter in this series when we're going to be looking at a completely different incarnation of GarageBand entirely. Until then, you can head over to Apple's website to check out their really useful page on Logic and it'll tell you all of the functions available to you in Logic. You know, scroll through, we've looked at lots of these already, Smart Tempo, there's a new feature we haven't yet looked at. And if I flick over to Apple's website page on GarageBand, you see it's very similar, taking you through some of the features that we've looked at already. Um, and you can see that the emphasis here is in the key of easy. It really does take a lot of the features from Logic and present them in a streamlined interface. That's all I've got time for today. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. If you guys want to find out more about making music in Logic, we have a course called Intro to Production Logic, perfect for you guys who are moving up from GarageBand. Check out pointblankmusicschool.com for more information.